Hi everyone, I'm Liz and welcome back to Elizabeth Ann Can Stitch. Hello, welcome back to another crafty report here at Elizabeth Ann Can Stitch. Um, I am Liz and I'm here to talk to you about everything that I've been crafting on the past two weeks. Sorry this video is a day or two late. Um, I have had a very, very busy couple of weeks and I just got home from vacation on Sunday night. So it is now Monday late afternoon and I am sitting down to film. And I have so, so very much to share with you guys. Um, I am going to do the same thing in this video as I did in the last video, where I'm going to kind of break things up into chapters. And I will make sure I have links and timestamps in the description box below if you want to jump around to the sections that you're interested in. Um, if anyone is new here, I normally share my cross stitch, quilting, sewing, knitting, wool applique, uh, English paper piecing, anything that I have been working on um, craft-wise in the last two weeks. And then so this week I have cross stitch, knitting, quilting, and sewing. So yeah, that's the agenda for today. Um, I like to start out with like life updates and things, just a couple of things to share with you guys. Um, so about a week and a half ago now, I went and bought a new car. Yay. Um, I'm very excited now, but the process of buying a car is like not the most fun at all because why does it take so long? Um, <laughs> but I did. I got a new car. I wasn't even in the market for a new car. My car was not that old and did not have that many miles on it because pandemic and I just never drove. I worked from home for two and a half years, right? So I was not really in the market, but my dad was in the market for a new car and then decided he didn't really want to spend a ton of money. And I kind of jokingly offered to let him buy my car so I could buy something new. And he took me up on it, which was awesome because then I got to buy myself a new car, <laughs> which I mean, you know, whatever. It's fine. Um, I probably didn't need to, but I really did want a new car. <laughs> I, uh, whenever I travel like for work and for fun, um, I always get jealous of like the new rental cars that have like all the nice new features and like car play and all the, anyways, y'all don't care. But, um, I had like talked myself into wanting a new car over the last year, but I was like, there's no reason for me to get a new car, but I found a reason. So, <laughs> um, here's a picture of me with my new car. It's a Volvo XC40. I love it. Um, so that took up a lot of time a week and a half, two weeks ago. Uh, and then, these past few days, I was just in Bentonville, Arkansas with three of my best friends. So one of my best friends, Erin, she used to live here in Austin and she moved to Bentonville, Arkansas in June of this year. And um, she moved to be closer to her husband's family. They, um, her husband grew up in the area and that's where her in-laws and everyone is. And they just decided that they needed a change. And so they moved to Bentonville. And um, I had been to Fayetteville, Arkansas before, and I've been to Little Rock. Um, but this was my first time in Bentonville and it was amazing. There is so much to see and do in this little tiny town and like all of it's free. So I shared a ton of of photos, videos, all kinds of stuff as I traveled. And I'm going to save those as a highlight on my Instagram in case anyone is interested in fun things to do in Bentonville, Arkansas. Um, I'm sure I put a few pictures in here for you guys to look at, but we had the best time. I really got basically no crafting done though, because these are my non-crafty friends. So we did a lot of hikes, a lot of walking, a lot of shopping, a lot of eating, you know, we went and saw the museums. Um, you know, we just, there wasn't a lot of downtime where I could just sit and craft. Um, so I did a little bit of knitting on uh, my husband's hat that I've been working on, which I'll show you in a minute. But other than that, not a lot of crafting got done for about three and a half, four days. So I still have plenty to show you guys though. Don't worry. Um, <laughs> I don't know why I feel like I have to like make excuses for myself. Everybody gets busy and gets slow. So some weeks I have more to show you, some I have less. But yeah, um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else interesting that happened in the last two weeks to me. So yeah, let's jump in. And I think I'm actually going to start with knitting this week because I have like the most to say about knitting 
I have a lot to say about cross stitch too, but I'm gonna do my knitting first. Okay, I have been, I do not have enough knitting bags and um, I have just been grabbing any bag I can find in my house and using it as a knitting bag. So <laughs> I have this awesome, crazy vinyl um, Tula Pink bag. I think I got this from Fat Quarter Shop a couple years ago. And I was like, uh, can I shove a scarf in here? Yes. <laughs> I think I showed you guys in my last video how the scarf was falling out of the bag I had it in. So I had to move it to a bigger bag. Okay, so this project is the Boyfriend Scarf. And this is a free pattern on Ravelry. I will link all of my Ravelry project pages down in the description box below. And that has all of the pattern, yarn, needles, like all the details. So um, if you have any questions about how or what I'm knitting, you can find me on Ravelry. And this is my boyfriend's scarf. Ooh, it's getting long. <laughs> show you the stitches up close. Um, let's see, I did move my project marker. So this is where I was at last time. So I knit about six more inches on this. And I think I only have about maybe two more feet. No, one more foot of knitting maybe um, until I am done with the scarf. So this should hopefully be done very soon. Um, I thought I might have it done by this video, but I knit on a bunch of other things too. So, but that's okay. This is just like very good, very easy couch knitting. It's, a, I didn't bring it with me on my trip because it's just bulky at this point. And so it's not really a good travel project because I just did carry on and I really didn't have room to bring a ton of projects. Otherwise this one could have come with me and I probably could have gotten this one done. Um, I am knitting this with Hedgehog Fibers Merino Aran yarn. And I believe the color is called filigree. It is just absolutely gorgeous, crazy colorful, so soft, so nice to work with. I believe I'm using a US eight needle or maybe a seven. I can't remember, but it's all in my project page. So that is the first knitting project that I've been working on. Um, the next knitting project is one that I keep in this super cute little drawstring bag that um, I have a tutorial for if you're interested from a couple of months ago. I'll link it down below. Just a very simple little drawstring sock bag. And this, um, this is a project I started since I last saw you. And I, at some point a week and a half or two weeks ago, I decided that I was gonna hand make all these gifts. And I set myself ridiculous deadlines. And this is one of those projects. So the friend that I went to visit, um, Erin, is actually her birthday today. Happy birthday, Erin. And I told myself that I had time to knit her a pair of socks before we went to visit that I could bring to her. I did not. I did not have time. Um, I did get one of the socks done and I just realized I should put it on a sock blocker so it's easier to show it to you. Here is the first sock that I finished knitting. I'll come in close so you can see the yarn. This is, oh gosh, I'm forgetting the name. I think it's Log, Log House Fiber. I'll put the info on the screen. Um, this is a hand dyer that I found on Etsy from actually, I think she's Canadian. And this is like the pumpkin patch sock set. And I'm obsessed with it. It is so soft and nice and the colors are amazing. And so this is actually a Summer Lee Hello Sailor sock from that sock um, book that she has. And of course I will have everything linked below, but I finished the first sock and I had three days left till I was supposed to leave for my trip. And I was like, yeah, I can do this. I can do this. So I cast on for the second sock and I made it to this point and realized that no, I could not knit the rest of the sock in a day and a half. And I was not going to get a completed sock set done to send to my friend. Um, so what's the plan now you ask? She doesn't know. I didn't tell her anything about this and she doesn't watch these videos. Um, <laughs> so I did knit these to a size seven, a US seven, cause that is her shoe size. I am a US 11, 12 or 12. So like 
these aren't going to fit me. Um, so I either need to finish this one really quickly and like express mail them so that they still make sense as like an October gift or save it for next year, like finish it and save it and gift them to her next year. Or I don't know. I don't really have a plan. Um, I'm going to finish the sock set. Obviously I've got the second one, you know, in progress, almost to the heel. Um, but I set myself these crazy goals sometimes and um, some of them work out and some of them don't. I'll show you one that worked out in a minute, but I kind of like, I don't know what I was doing. I just like wanted to make all these gifts all at once and then I didn't have time. I ran out of time. Um, I am using, let's see, I believe I'm using a US size one uh, needle. I'm doing magic loop. I told you guys the pattern and these are my yarn cakes and I love it. And I do have another sock set from this Etsy shop that I want to knit some socks for me with that I might start um, closer to Halloween. So anyways, those are the socks I've been knitting on. Okay, another project that got some love while I was out on um, in Arkansas on my trip um, is the Muscleborough hat that I am knitting for my husband, Rob. Uh, he requested a red and black striped hat and I had wanted to try the Muscleborough pattern. Um, it's wildly popular and I wanted to give it a go. And um, so I am on, I guess, the kind of first half of the hat. It's knit in a super long tube that you put kind of inside each other to double layer it. And so I'm still on the first half. And I am using, let's see, Sweet Georgia Tough Love Sock in the color charcoal and as my main color. And so here is kind of where I am at with this hat. Um, maybe a couple more inches until I reach the midpoint. This one is not gonna have a folded brim. He just wants like kind of like a skull cap, like close fitting beanie. So I think it'll be like seven inches or seven and a half inches. And then the other half will be the matching seven and a half inches. And so the first half I'm doing as just black. So this will be the inside of the hat. And then the second half will have the stripes. And the reason I'm doing it this way is because well, I'm trying to make it easy on myself. So he wants chunky red stripes on the black. So kind of like maybe one inch stripes. Um, alternating black and red. And so what I figured I would do would be to knit the first half of the hat and get it to the exact perfect length where he knows like it's fitting exactly where he wants over his ears. And then I know I'm ready to start the second half. And then I can count my rows and know exactly how much I'm going to have to knit to match this. And then I can do the math for how big is each red stripe going to be to make sense with what I have left to knit. So that's my plan in my head. I think it's going to work out. Um, and yeah, I actually want to get this a couple more, more rows in this today and take it off the needle so I can have him try it on for me. So that um, I think, you know, so I know like it's the right size and that I'll, you know, when I'll be ready to start the second half of the hat and do all of my striping. The red that I have to do the striping with, um, it's sitting across the room, so I can't show it to you, but it is a Madeline Tosh sock and it is the color Tarte. So um, a really deep kind of wine red is the red that will go with this kind of charcoal gray black. So yeah, um, I'm knitting this, I think with US two, size two needles. And um, I think I'm following the seven and a half stitches per inch sizing. Um, I think that's the measurement I ended up with, but yeah, very excited about this. Got a lot of rounds. I didn't put a progress marker on this, but I probably knit about two inches on this. This is like the only thing I had time for craft wise, um, while we were traveling, except for, I did spend two hours one day on this other project that I'll show you in a second, but yeah, that is my little muscle burra hat. And this is in another one of my little drawstring bags that I have a tutorial for. Perfect for hat and socks. Love these. Okay, let's get into the last knitting project and the one you probably want to hear about if you are also trying to knit this project. Um, this is the Stephen West Mystery Knit Along that just started on Thursday. The drama. Um, <laughs> uh, I don't even know how to start with this one. So I... 
Um, I'll wait and show you my bag because this is, I'll show this in the sewing segment. I did make myself a new bag for this project. I shared, um, I think I shared my colors in one of my videos. I know I've been sharing them on Instagram. I picked four colors of Cascade Heritage, which is their sock yarn. And it's really inexpensive. And I'm really glad it's inexpensive because of what I'm about to talk to you about. <laughs> Let me stack these up and show you my colors. How pretty is that? I love these. Um, so this is what I started with. Four skeins of fingering weight Cascade Heritage. And I have been so excited for this to start. I am, you know, newly back into knitting. I used to knit a ton, but like 20 to 15, 10 years ago. I haven't knit anything in like 10 years until this past, you know, six months. And um, when Stephen West released his kind of like MCAL planning and kits video, I got so excited. And because I've seen people stitch these or knit these, but I had never participated. And I was like, yes, I want to do something like crazy over the top. Like I want to learn new skills and just be part of like a knit along and do something really cool. So I kitted mine up. Um, two of my friends, Shiloh, ExitGMD, kitted one up. And then Laura, New Hampshire Stitcher, kitted one up. And we had a little group chat about it. We we're all excited, right? Well, so the first clue was supposed to come out on Thursday morning, um, October 5th. I believe that was October 5th. And that was the day that I was flying out to Tulsa to go over to Arkansas to hang out with my friends. And I really wanted to bring this project with me because I was so excited to get it started. And so Thursday morning when I woke up, I checked my email and I saw that I had the first clue and I was like, yes, okay, let's do this, right? So I had like an hour um, extra time where I didn't need to be like packing or getting ready to go to the airport. And so I sat on the couch and cast on and started knitting the first clue. Um, about an hour into my time, about an hour into knitting the clue, I got the update that the pattern had been changed. And um, basically, I guess what happened, <laughs> basically what happened is that people started knitting the first clue. And as they were completing the first clue, and as they were watching Steven's video and looking at his completed first clue, um, people felt like the motif resembled a um oh am i i don't really want to say the word i might beep i might bleep the words yeah just because i don't want my youtube video to come up in any weird searches about that symbol um how am i gonna do this yeah sorry i'm just thinking out loud because youtube you know has sensitivities to certain words obviously and like i don't want my video to be labeled as anything weird um but basically a hate symbol. I mean, I'll just call it a hate symbol. Um, people were seeing that the center in certain ways like resembled a hate symbol. And so understandably, um, Stephen was like, oh my gosh, I did not intend for that at all. And he started offering alternative options for the first clue. And so I hadn't scrolled ahead to look at the finished first clue. So I was just happily knitting for an hour, getting the first section done. And then I saw that and I thought, Oh no. And I went and looked at the video and I was like, yeah, I see it. Um, and so at that point I had to leave and go to the airport. So I just like literally pulled what I had knitted off my needles, cut the yarn, put all the yarn in my bag and packed it. And I was like, I will knit an alternate version. Like I'm not knitting the hate symbol version. Like I'm just not doing it. Right. And, um, packed my yarn up, went and got on the plane, whatever. Right. Well, Steven himself had posted an alternate center motif using the original instructions, just changing the colors around. So it was like more of a color block. Um, I'll put a picture up here. And so I was like, that's the version I want to do. Okay, I'm not going to do the original version. Um, I'm going to do this color block version. And so on Saturday, I had about two hours where we were all kind of like napping in the Airbnb. And instead of napping, which I really needed a nap, I was like, I'm going to start this Stephen West MCAL. And so I started mine over and I started that color block version and um, made some progress. And then last night when I got home, I made a ton of progress and I was really excited about it. And then today we get another update from Stephen who has removed the video from YouTube of the first clue. 
um, which is all the instructions that are really helpful because I don't really know what I'm doing. Um, there's a lot of new techniques in this for me. And basically he says he doesn't want anyone to stitch any version of clue one, not any of the alternate color options he gave, not anyone coming up with their own alternate versions. He just does not want anyone to stitch the first clue. And that was just like really disappointing. And just like, it's like letting the air out of a balloon. Like I was so excited about this project. And then it was just like somebody poked me and it was like, <laughs> like that feeling, right? Um, I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you, I guess my start. Um, this is, oh, that's the backside with all my threads. So this is where I got to. Um, so I'll put the color block version that he suggested um, up here so you can see what I was kind of trying to do with mine. And I was really excited about it, to be honest. And I know that no one is physically preventing me from continuing on to finish my color blocked version. But the designer has asked that nobody post photos or even stitch, you know, any of the variations of the first block. Um, and instead, to change over to this completely alternative pattern that he's now released. Um, I've looked at the instructions for that. I don't really want to knit that alternative um, version. I thought I was fine to continue on with the color block, but like all my excitement has been let out and I don't want to cause any drama by continuing to knit this alternate color block version. Um, so I'm just, I'm just, what do you call it? UFOing this? Like this is, this is gone now. Um, I'm not unknitting it. I'm not starting over with his other instructions. I don't think I'm going to keep up at all. Like I'm not going to, I don't think I'm going to knit this MCAL is basically the gist of the story. Um, I just like all my excitement has now <laughs> left the building and I have plenty of other knitting projects and another one actually that I want to start tonight, which I'll show you in a second. Um, so I'm going to move on with my life and I'm just really disappointed because I was so, so excited to knit this project. And I completely, like, I feel so bad for Stephen West. I'm sure this is, like, the biggest bummer of a lifetime to spend all this time on a project, release it, and then have people point out, rightly so, that it looks like a hate symbol, right? And then you have to course correct. But I don't think he may be course corrected in the best way. Um... It's causing just a lot of like weird tension on Ravelry, which I don't spend much time on, but um, I went and read through the, the posts and I don't know, it's too much and I don't like it. So I am on the hunt for another four color shawl. Casa Pinka has a few that I like, um, but yeah, I haven't picked one yet. So I will probably do a four color shawl, just not the geo gradient one at this point. Maybe if when the final clue comes out, I just really love the look of it. Maybe I'll change my mind and I'll start this one over. But I just wanted to update y'all because I, I know I had talked about how excited I was for starting this, but unfortunately this is as far as mine is going to get. Um, and I'm going to move on to other projects, even though I love these colors. So... Yeah, that is everything that I have been knitting or attempting to knit on um, for the past couple of weeks. I mentioned a new project. I, um, well, <laughs> I treated myself to some yarn and I picked a project that I really, really want to start. And I was going to wait a little bit because I just started the shawl, but now that I'm UFOing this, I think I might start this new project tonight. Let me show it to you. All of the yarn came in this gigantic box because it's a sweater. Um, I don't know if I can hold all these skeins at once. It's so much yarn. Let's see. Uh, <laughs> can you see it? Can you see it? Um, <laughs> this is the yarn I just bought. This is Madeline Tosh DK. Tosh DK. It is a 100% superwash merino wool. And this is the color paper. Um, so this is going to be my main color. And the pattern that I'm going to be working on and starting is the Stripe Hype sweater. So I have been watching a lot of knitting videos on YouTube lately, and I feel like everyone is talking about the Stripe Hype sweater. And I've had it favorited since I saw it a couple months ago whenever it was released. And I was like, it's time. I want to knit this. Have I finished the other two sweaters that I have in progress? 
I have not. I haven't even worked on them in two weeks, but that's okay. I'm going to start a new one because <laughs> that's my favorite thing to do is to start new projects. And I am so pumped about this one. So um, this Madeline Tosh paper is my main body color. Why is this skein looking like a different color? Maybe it's just the lighting. Yeah. Um, I think I have five. Yeah, I have five skeins of paper. And then I needed five skeins of contrast color. And <clears throat> excuse me, one of those skeins is still on the way. So I only have four of the colors to show you. But these are four of my stripe colors. And then the fifth one is actually a navy blue, like a darker blue. So I have a light pink, red, light blue, dark blue, and a gold. And I haven't figured out exactly where I'm going to be, like how I'm going to play out my stripes. I'm going to follow the pattern. So I'm going to do the color blocked striped version. Um, but I haven't decided exactly where each color goes yet. I guess I'll have to figure that out tonight. And I'll have to not start with the dark blue because I don't have that one yet. <laughs> I guess I could wait till the dark blue gets here. I don't know. I'm feeling like I want a new start. Um, we'll find out. I'll share all about it on Instagram. So you can follow me at Elizabeth Ann can stitch on Instagram if you want to keep up in real time with my progress. But I am very, very excited to start this stripe pipe sweater. So and I think that's pretty much my only knitting haul my yarn haul from the last two weeks. So yeah, I think that is the knitting section wrapped up. <laughs> Let's move on to some cross stitch. <laughs> Okay, so for cross stitch, um, I wanted to start with some previous finishes. Uh, as I mentioned at the start of the video, I have not been doing that much crafting. I mean, I have, I shouldn't say not that much. I've only stitched on one cross stitch project the last two weeks. And um, that's not enough cross stitch content. <laughs> <laughs> I lost my train of thought. Uh, so I also wanted to share some of my favorite Halloween and fall previous finishes just to share those with you guys because I set them all out a couple weeks ago. And I think I showed a little video of my setup, but I didn't actually like show in detail any of my um, kind of like fall and Halloween decor pieces. So I grabbed a few of my favorite ones and I'm going to run through those first and then I'll show you the project I've been working on for two weeks and... Then I'm going to, oh, the most exciting part is I went to visit the Silver Needle in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Um, so on Thursday, October 5th, I flew into Tulsa with my friend Amber. And um, before we drove over to Bentonville, we spent some time in the Silver Needle and it was amazing. So I have a huge, huge bag of haul. Ooh. And it's like all charts. So, um, and it's like all Halloween. So I'll show you that at the end of this little segment. Um, let's get into the previous finishes. Okay, so this first one is a little fall finish. And this is, oh, should I even show this? This isn't out, of, like this isn't a chart you can get. It's okay, I'll show it anyways. Um, this chart was from a friend stitch retreat, which is hosted by Heart and Hand in Bent Creek. Um, their friend, st friend stitch retreats are amazing. You should follow them both on Instagram so that you can um, find out when they're hosting more friend stitch retreats. But this was a pattern included in one of my friend stitch boxes, I believe two years ago. And I am obsessed with this guy. This is the first stand up I had ever done and I absolutely love him. It's just got a little brown Lori Holt fabric on the back. Um, let me see if I remember all the details. If not, I'll put them on the screen. But I believe this is an 18 count linen with pearl cotton, but I cannot remember the size. Um, and I loved stitching this kind of chunky pearl cotton over um, two strands of linen, like the chunky linen. I think it looks so cool. It was so quick. It's like high impact. I love the single color and the graphic look to him. He's just so cute and just really, really happy with how this little stand up turned out. And I love putting him out every year on my entry table. So that's my first previous finish. Um, this one I wanted to show because it's a new release right now for my friend Liz. Hello from Liz Matthews. 
and um, I've forgotten the name, so I'll put it down here. I actually did not stitch this one, so I can't give you all the details, but this was stitched for me by Jennifer, who is the Whistle Stop Stitcher on YouTube. She hasn't done videos in a little while. You can follow her on Instagram, though. We did a fall Halloween swap last year, I believe. And this was, uh, this had just been released in Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher. And so she stitched this super cute Hello from Liz Matthews chart for me and finished it beautifully with some chenille and the little black cat fabric. I mean, it's just the cutest. So I have this out on my entry table in my little pillow bowl and I love it. Thank you, Jennifer. And here is a little pillow that I made. I feel like I was just watching a floss tube and somebody showed this chart and I wish I could remember who it was. And I was like, oh yeah, I stitched that one and it's adorable. Um, gosh, who was I watching? I can't remember. Uh, but this is, let me see if I can hold it and show it to you. This is a trilogy chart and, um, ooh, will it stay in focus? Sorry, I hope the camera is not going crazy. Oh, it is, isn't it? Is that working? So I stitched mine, I believe on 36 count with one strand. And yeah, I think it's super cute. I finished it with a little plaid and some lady dot pom poms. And ooh, I filled it with walnut shells and it just sits in a little bowl. Um, you can see the size difference. It's teeny. <laughs> So yeah, that is another finish. Okay, I have two more previous Halloween finishes. This one is a heart and hand called Ye Old Crow. And I stitched this on Tiger's Eye Weeks Dye Works Linen, 36 count Tiger's Eye. And I just thought it was so cool. I stitched this back in 2020. Um, I believe I used black coffee as my variegated black. Mm, actually, it might be... It might be carriage black. If I can, if I have it written down in my notes, I'll put it on the screen. Um, but it's like an over dyed black and I absolutely love it. And this is just a little finishing board. I don't know if this is one of April Homestead Needleworks boards. I don't think so because it's a thinner one. I can't remember where I got this one to be honest, but just a little black board. And it's like easy to lean on an easel and I sometimes just hang it on a little push pin on the wall with that little hole up there. So love this one. And then this is like my favorite, favorite ever Halloween finish that I've done. And this is a drawn thread chart called It's Almost Halloween. And let me try and hold it in front of my eyes so it'll focus on the stitching. Oh, I really hope it's focusing. Okay, so I stitched this completely as called for. I am almost positive, yes, yeah, somebody had sent me um, this kitted up. Like they weren't gonna stitch it and so they had all the threads and I believe even the fabric and they sent me the chart and all the stuff and I'm obsessed. I stitched this in um, October or like September, 2020. And I am obsessed with how this turned out. I'll give you some close-ups. Um, so once I was done, I found this little wooden plaque piece at like Michael's or Hobby Lobby, and I hand painted it with these little candy corn and ghosts. And I actually did a video like tutorial of me. I don't know if it was a tutorial or just like a sped up kind of like watch me finish something. If I can go find that video, it's probably from September, 2020. Um, I will link it down below, but I just absolutely love how this turned out. Um, I think it was the first time I'd ever used like Krynik or I think this was Treasure Braid for that green bow on the hat. I don't know if you can tell if it's that it's sparkly, but it is. And I just think it's so cute. This really is like one of my all time favorite Halloween pieces. And um, yeah, so I just wanted to share it. I'm like feeling all the Halloween stuff right now. And like, it's fully October, so you know, it's time. Um, but I have like a bunch of Halloween stuff I wanna start, which, it's kind of stressing me out because I also have whip go goals and like we're in October. I only have October, November, December. And so I like, I don't really want to fail now, but man, these months are like where I'm just like so hyped up to stitch Halloween and Christmas. And 
I have some big whip go goals that I'm like, am I actually going to be able to finish these by the end of the year? And like, do I care if I don't? Like, if I don't meet my goal, can I just let it go and just be okay with the progress I made this year, which is good. I made a lot of progress. Or do I just like stick to it and just power through and know that next year I'll have more time for all the like holiday stitching? I don't know. I can't really decide. Um, because spoiler, I haven't started either of my October goals. I brought one of my October goals with me on my trip, but I didn't have any time to cross stitch. So I haven't gotten any progress on that. And then my second whip go goal is a 10 day goal, meaning by October 20th, 21st, I need to be starting that and working on it every day to complete it. Um, ah. So anyways, I don't know what's going to happen with whip go. Um, you'll find out with me in my next video two weeks from now, but uh, yeah, let me show you what I have been stitching on for the past two weeks. So I have been working on my floral motif sampler. And this is the one that I kitted up at the attic when I was there with Liz in September. And I kitted mine up with the attic's silk conversion. If you are interested in stitching it like I'm stitching it with the silk conversion, you can contact the attic and they will sell you um, their converted silk list. And yeah, you can do it too. It's like a lot of dinky dyes, a couple bell swa, some gum nuts. It's a mix of silks. They're all over dyed and they're all gorgeous. And I am loving how this is turning out and this is like this has been the only thing I wanted to stitch on lately so that's this is the only thing I've stitched on the past two weeks and here oh here is what it's looking like I completed um, page three of the design which was the top right and I have moved down into page six which is the bottom right and I absolutely love it get it up close for you guys the colors are so pretty. I am stitching this on 36 count Tabby Cat by Fox and Rabbit. No, who is this by? Oh, <laughs> Tabby Cat. Sorry, Tabby Cat is the dyer. This is my first piece of Tabby Cat. Um, the color is called Just the Ticket. 36 count, Just the Ticket. Um, really pretty golden neutral. And I'm using one strand of silk over two linen threads. And I'm using all of the Attic's silk, um, over dyed silk conversion. There is, this chart does call for just over dyed cottons. So of course you can just do the over, over dyed cottons or you can convert it to DMC if you'd rather. Um, I think honestly, anything you stitch this in will look great. I mean, the chart is just so fun. It's just a bunch of different little floral motifs as it, you know, the name suggests. And I absolutely love seeing them come to life. So yeah, I've been working on this one a bunch over the last two weeks. Ooh, so that's what I've been cross stitching on and what I had previously been cross stitching on. Uh, let's talk about the silver needle because it was great. Okay, so when I knew that I was flying into Tulsa, I knew I was going to have to stop at the silver needle. I have heard, <coughs> oh, excuse me, my voice. I've heard so many awesome things about that store and from people who go to Galleria about their setup at Galleria and all the amazing things they do. Um, so I totally planned my flight around getting to go to the Silver Needle. <laughs> so there's only one direct flight a day from Austin to Tulsa and that flight lands at close to 4 p.m. and the Silver Needle closes at 6 p.m. So I knew it was going to be tight, but I made it to Silver Needle about 4.30 p.m. on Thursday and um, was in there until about 5.45 and it was great. So I found lots of fun stuff. I have tons of pictures um, and little videos I took of the store that hopefully I'm putting in here for you guys to see. I didn't have time to film like a full shop tour like I did at the attic, otherwise I totally would have done it. But um, if you are anywhere nearby Tulsa, go to that store. It is amazing. And one of my absolute favorite things was their Mill Hill Buttons and Beads collection. So I have done a ton of Mill Hill kits, like the little ornament style kits. And um, I've always admired the Buttons and Beads ones, but I've never done one. Well, they do them. Okay, let me start with the fact that Mona Boast is an employee at the Silver Needle and she does all their finishing and she is amazing. I have taken a class with her virtually in Friend Stitch. She did like a finishing class and that lady knows how to finish cross stitch. Um, and all of her models that she's done in that store are just 
impeccable and beautiful and I love them. So that was super fun to see. And so she does these buttons and beads kits on like as pillow finishes. So the Mill Hill calls for you to stitch them on perforated paper and to frame them in these little wooden frames. It's super cute. I love to do that. But um, or I'd love to do that. But seeing them as pillows, I was like, okay, no, this is what I want to do. Um, so I hopefully I'm showing you pictures of what that looks like. Uh, so I had to pick one out, which was the hardest part because they have a wall of every single one you can think of. And they're amazing. But I'm really into Halloween right now. And I decided I wanted to do a Halloween one. So I picked out the haunted hotel. And it looks like this. Oh my gosh. Um, I don't remember if I took a picture of the model or just the video, whatever I have, I'll put in here. Um, and so the buttons and beads kit come with the perforated paper, all of the floss and all of the beads. So kitted up, ready to go. These are so good. Um, whenever I am trying to get somebody into cross stitch who has never cross stitched before, I always recommend the Mill Hill ornament kits. That's like what I got my mother-in-law started stitching on. I think they're so easy. They come with everything you need. Perforated paper is really easy to stitch on. So like, I feel like the Mill Hill ornaments and buttons and beads would be excellent beginner kits. The only difference with buttons and beads is that they're bigger, um, so they take longer. So for new people, you know, they might lose interest. So I kind of recommend the ornament size, but these are very beginner friendly. Beading is so simple. They have directions in here, so easy to do. And they even have a beading needle for you in here. Um, so I did buy a piece of 28 count linen that they had pre-cut into the sizes you need to do their little pillow finishes. So I am all ready to go. And this one I want to start right now, <laughs> of course. Um, I'm just really feeling all of the Halloween stuff right now. Um, speaking of Halloween, I'm just going to try and do all the Halloween haul out of here first. <laughs> um, I got this new, I think this is a new one. I hadn't seen it before. It's a Satsuma Street, um, basically like a Mill Hill kit. It's, but it's the Satsuma Street version and it's called Creepy Crawly. So cute. Um, and this again comes with the floss and the beads and the perforated paper. So um, my husband loves these. And so I've done a couple of them now for his office. And so I'm going to do a third one. Okay. Um, they really had, I don't know if they do their displays, like if they change out their display seasonally, or if they just always have this level of like Halloween stuff out, but all of the Halloween models, like Ooh, they really got me. So I saw this Barbara Anna design that I had not seen before, and it's called Witch House. It's from 2017, it looks like. Witch House. Um, it's so cute. It's little. It's like 51 by 68. Um, I honestly kind of feel like I want to finish it as like, they had it as like a little cube, stand up cube finish. Um, I've never done one of those before, but I might try that. And so while I was there, I was like, well, I don't have any purple linen and I love that it's stitched on purple. So I got a piece of 36 count Peoria purple. I think that's what it's called. I don't know what the brand. Oh, I think this might've been a Weeks Dye Works linen, but, um, yeah. So this is the purple I picked out to do mine on and it's just stitched with DMC. So I can pull my DMC out of my stash and I want to start this one right now too. Ooh, I like have starditis really bad right now. It's like, I want to just like not work on anything I've been working on and just start a whole new line of whips. <laughs> I know other people go through that too, but it sounds crazy to say out loud. Like I have so many great projects I need to finish, but like I'm just having one of those, like clear the decks, let's start everything new. Um, I also picked up this Prairie Schooler book number 197, Hocus Pocus, because these are all so cute. And yes, I have a ton of other Prairie Schooler Halloween, Halloween charts in my stash, but you know, I wanted this one. So I will probably do this as individual. I don't know. Now that I'm looking at the big design, I'm like, well, I kind of like the big design. I think I bought it thinking I would do them as little ornaments because I kind of want like a Halloween tree um, eventually, but I really do like the big design all stitched together. So I don't know. This one needs more thought. Um, okay. This one is Rosewood Manor, 
which if I'm honest, I had an idea in my head of what a Rosewood Manor chart was, which was kind of like a big florally geometric -y type design. And I guess I didn't realize that she does other things too. Um, silly Liz. Anyways, there were a bunch of really cool Halloween Rosewood Manor charts and I loved this one. Um, this is also, this is stitched on dark blue, but I think I might also stitch this one on that purple because I think I have enough purple to do two designs on it. This one is called Mice on a Pumpkin. And look how cute that is. Oh, so fun. Oh, there was one chart they didn't have that I... Oh, what was it called? I'll put it up on the screen here. If anyone knows, I need to Google. If anyone knows where to find this chart, I think it's an older, like 2012 Just Nan chart. Maybe it's easily, I don't know. I, I need to Google, but um, they had a model of it that was so good, but they didn't have any of the charts. I need to find that one. Um, then I got a Birds of a Feather chart. Um, they actually had a pretty big selection of Birds of a Feather Halloween charts. These are out of print, but you can sometimes find them in cross in cross stitch shops that have stock of them left. So this is Remember Me by Birds of a Feather. And I just thought it looked super cool. Um, I feel like Rob will really like this one. I haven't even showed him my haul yet, <laughs> but I feel like he'll like this one. So I got that. Then I think that is at the end of my Halloween. Okay, that's the end of my Halloween haul. So everything else is, I mean, this one's fall. This is the new Jeanette Douglas Chubby Fox that just came out. I have the Chubby Bird and the Chubby Bunny and now the Chubby Fox. Have I stitched any? No, I don't care. I love them. Chubby Fox. Um, this is one I had not seen before. I think it's kind of new and it is so pretty. This is called Painted Flowers by Shakespeare's Peddler. And they show the model on black, which is gorgeous. And I do think that's how I would want to stitch it. But they also show an alternate coloring on a light fabric. So you could totally do this on a light fabric as well. But I really love the graphic look on this black fabric. So this is more of a springtime to me stitch. So probably not something I would stitch right now, but I had to have it. And I picked up the new 2023 Christmas ornaments, just cross stitch magazine. Oh my gosh. And literally on the back is all the new Mill Hill stuff. I want to do it all. <laughs> um, I haven't even flipped through this yet, to be honest. I should have like kept this out on the plane to read through. Um, I know Pam from Just Keep Stitching is doing um, this little, what did she call him? Like a... She called it his flying helmet or something. I don't know. There's something really funny she said about it when she first um, pointed it out. But speaking of Pam and Stephanie, um, if any of you guys watch Just Keep Stitching, which I'm sure you do, they have a segment that they call Silver and Gold, which is where they shout out some newer floss tubers and some older floss tubers. And they gave me the nicest, nicest shout out on their video yesterday. Um, I'll link to them down below just in case you're not familiar. Pam and Steph are part of the StitchCon committee and I mean they're kind of just like the OGs of floss tube, right? Like they're the best. Um, and three years ago in September of 2020, they um, discovered my channel. They started watching me and that was back when I had I think nine or ten videos. And they gave me the nicest shout out on their channel that really gave me a boost. Like a lot of people I think found me because they gave me a shout out on their channel. And um, I have this little clip I'll play right here. Um, we found the rock so, that we've been living uh, under. We want you to go give this gal some love. Yes. Uh, her name is Liz yes. and you may have found her before us. Probably because she's got nine, 10 videos she's already. Got, so. She's got nine or 10. She records on Sunday like us. Yeah. And it's Elizabeth Ann. Can, can stitch. stitch so we'll link her below um she's into like the same stuff that we are absolutely you know? absolutely a lot of patriotic thank you she's doing land that i love with Teresa kogut which is going to be one of my startober starts yes and um, a lot of 36 and 40 count yep she's she, and she's she's and just, she's very talented she's very very talented and so uh go give live some love did i just say that right yes i was afraid i would you just said, go give Liv some love. Liz. Liz. I knew that came. <laughs> Words are hard. It's okay. Fine. Go give Liz some love, please. Thank yes. you. We love you, Liz. All right. 
And that's, from, I just love that. That's from when they gave me that original shout out three years ago. And I remember just squealing with delight watching that video because I didn't know they were about to say all these nice things about me. And I was like, oh my God, I love you guys. Um, and then last night I was watching their video at like midnight because I should have been going to sleep. But instead I was like new Pam and stuff. Um, and I heard them say our gold floss tuber is Liz. And I was like, wait, what? And then they said Elizabeth Ang is Stitch. I was like, they're talking about me again. Um, I have gotten to meet Pam and Steph several times in person now and um, have gotten to become friends with them. They are just the greatest. And I just want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you for all your lovely shout outs over the years. Um, Steph called me her biggest enabler. Steph also enables me. So does Pam. Um, I love watching their haul. Like the haul section is like sometimes my favorite section of the video. <laughs> Anyways, thank you, ladies. Love you both. Um, go check them out. If you've never watched Famous Stuff, I'll link them down below. Okay, back to haul. Um, I just got distracted because I remember Pam is the reason I bought this magazine. So I was like, this looks so cute. Um, and then I also found, I don't know if I can really show this. I'll hold it back here. It's a postcard with a cross stitch design on it. It was $2 and it is from Postcard Patterns. And it is the Yellowstone um, chart. And I actually got this as a gift for my sister, Sarah. She's probably not watching this, but it doesn't matter, Sarah, this is for you. But it has a little Yellowstone National Park design. She is like a national park fanatic. She goes to all of them. So um, I thought she would enjoy, here's like what the postcard side looks like. So it's like a little postcard on one side and then a little cross stitch design on the other. So I got that for her. And then I got, Let's see, I got the purple fabric, but I got one other fabric that I don't really have plans for, but I just wanted it. And that's because it is a 36 count Picture This Plus doubloon, which is a really pretty color that I don't have in my stash. So I got a fat quarter of doubloon. And then I got one Christmassy chart, which I'm thinking I might've bought this at the attic. I don't know if I did, I'll give it away. <laughs> I'm just like, did I already buy this? This is a new October house fiber art and it's called All Is Calm. And it has these two really pretty designs in it. Um, hopefully those are in focus, but yeah. Um, oh yeah, and one other Christmassy thing. Silver Needle had the Thread Milk floss drops and I absolutely love these. So I got another little Christmassy set for a Christmas project. Um, and then I got some size 28 Bowens. I, they didn't have any peacemakers, which are kind of my new favorites, but I also really still like the 28 Bowens and I just needed another pack of 28s. So, well, I have plenty of needles here at home. I picked them up because I had brought two cross stitch projects with me, but I realized only one of them had its needle like tucked into the fabric. And I was like, what if I lose or break that needle over the weekend and I need another needle? Turns out I didn't cross stitch at all, but I did buy a backup pack of needles just in case I needed them um, while I was out of town because I like to be prepared for my crafting. Okay, I think that's all of the cross stitch. So let's move on to quilting and sewing. Okay, the first thing I wanna share with you guys is that I completed the baby quilt that I had to get done by last weekend. Um, so here is the baby quilt that I made for my cousin, Abby. We had her baby shower on Sunday, October 1st, and I did get it done in time, woo! Um, I am, I have not started editing the video um, tutorial, so I'm gonna put together a whole end-to-end -end quilt video of me making that quilt, showing you step by step how to put it together. It's super simple, super easy. Um, it goes together really fast, and I'm really proud of how it turned out. She loved it. <laughs> so um, I'm just really excited that, you know, it turned out as well as it did. Like, it turned out even better than the vision I had originally had when I started and um, I'm really happy she loved it. And I'm not, that's all the details I'm gonna give you here because I'm gonna do a whole end to end video. Hopefully by next weekend, I can get that out. It's just gonna take a lot of editing because I have tons of clips and stuff to put together and then I still need to do the intro. So I will let you guys know on Instagram when that's posted, um, but yeah, a quilt finish. <laughs> other thing that I sewed on and this is one of those things I was talking about earlier where I set myself these like impossible tasks and um worried about meeting my own deadlines um my friends Shiloh and Lauren and I decided we were going to stitch the Stephen West MCAL 
we've now all kind of decided that maybe we're going to pass. But <laughs> I didn't know that two weeks ago when I decided that I was going to make us all matching project bags. And um, if you follow me on Instagram, you might have seen that I was at the long arm quilter working on Abby's baby quilt. And I decided to bring some Halloween fabrics to quilt into panels that I could then cut up into bags. So that's what those panels were for. And um, I, I took some pictures of Shiloh and Lauren's bag, but I'll show you mine first. And then um, I'll show you pictures of how theirs turned out. And I think I think Shiloh might have a video coming out today so you can see hers on her video and Lauren I'm sure will show hers in her next video. Um, here is what my bag looks like. So cute. This is, these are both from the Kitty Corn. Um, well, I think it's called Halloween. Urban Chicks does um, kind of like, not reprints, but like they do like similar things the past few years. And so it was called Kitty Corn a couple years ago. I think this version's called Halloween, but it's like very similar vibes of fabrics. So it's like all kinds of little candy and then this little picnic table fabric with ants on it. Um, and then this bag has a little carrying handle. Uh, this is a pattern. So I didn't make this up. This is a paid for pattern that you can find on Etsy. I'll link it down below. I believe it's called the Kato bag. I'll put the picture and everything up in here. Um, super easy to follow. Great pattern. Um, comes with lots of sizes. This is the largest size included in the pattern, which they say would hold like a sweater. Um, we'll see. I don't know. Maybe because I'm like slightly bigger and I need a bigger sweater. I'm like, would a sweater really fit in here for me? I don't know. We're going to find out because I'm going to take out the shawl stuff and put all my sweater stuff in here and I'll let you know if it works. But uh, it's got you know, a drawstring top. So it opens up nice and big, fully lined. Here's all my shawl stuff. Um, I love having the little handle on it. And then for the drawstrings, you just pull. And the contrast bottom. I mean, I just think it turned out so cute. I'm really pleased with this. And I feel like I will be making more of these bags um, for myself. So yeah, uh, I'll put in pictures of Lauren and Shiloh's. They are the same style, but I used all different fabrics for us. Well, actually, no, I think I used this same black one on the bottom of all the bags, if I'm remembering correctly. Um, and then I believe Shiloh's was the kind of pink, um, witchier, like, I don't know, it's like a very cool, fun fabric. Um, I really loved it. And then um, Lauren's was also from this kind of Halloween line, but it was like ghosts and pumpkins and like very funky, fun Halloween prints. So yeah, those are the knitting bags. And um, yes, I was up to like two o'clock in the morning the night before I needed to mail them so that they could get them by October 5th. Why do I do these things to myself? <laughs> I like what what are they I, hey there's like a thing called like love languages people talk about right like my love language is I don't know something I and I don't even know if I'm using it in the right way but I feel like my love language for like other people is like gifting things and like especially making gifts it's like my favorite thing to do is to make people stuff um so love you girls <laughs> and I hope you love your bags <laughs> Uh, I do have a little bit of sewing haul. So I'll do that in this section. This is like a new format for me where I'm kind of trying to, you know, keep all of like items together. So you guys can let me know if you enjoy it. Um, of course, you know, I'm going to put the timestamps and everything so you can skip around to your heart's content. Um, so I'm going to show you my fabric haul. And these are two club kits that I got from Fat Quarter Shop that I pay for myself. And one of them is my Moda Fat Quarter Bundle. And this is the lighthearted petite Fat Quarter Bundle. And again, I don't know why they don't put the designer. I lighthearted. I feel like this is, you know what? I'm not even going to guess. I'll put it on the screen. I'm not sure who it is. Um, but this is the lighthearted bundle by Moda and whichever designer I've put on the screen. Um, absolutely gorgeous. I was really excited about this one. I am telling Elizabeth while you're editing this, go cancel your Moda subscription. I have way too many fat quarters in this house way too many. And I love getting the new collections. So that's why I have not canceled this, but I like I'm reaching 
overflow status. So I really need to take a break on some of my fat quarter clubs until I use some and then I can rejoin. That's like my incentive, like cancel them for now, use some fat quarters and then restart them. <laughs> Cause I have so many fat quarters in my house. Um, this is the October, 2023 Ruby star society quarterly bundle. And so this is also a fat quarter bundle. Um, that comes with a matching spool of thread and a pattern um, to use all the fat quarters. Oh, I'm sorry for this crinkle. I realize that's probably crinkly while I'm talking. Um, this is a quarterly club, Ruby Star Society. It comes with thread and a pattern. And then here is what the pattern looks like. You can see the bigger version down here. Um, I really actually like this pattern a lot. So this one might stay together. Sometimes I get these bundles and if I'm not really interested in using the fabrics together or the pattern, I just immediately unkit them and then put them in my color, like fat quarter bins that I store by color. But um, I really like this combo together and I really like the pattern. So I think I'll keep this one together until I make a decision. So that is my new fabric haul. And... Yeah, okay, I think we can move on to some happy mail. Okay, speaking of happy mail, um, I forgot to mention this in my last video, but I'm gonna mention it right now. I opened a P.O. box. Um, I really didn't know how inexpensive they were, and if I had known, I should have done this three years ago. So anytime somebody has wanted to send me something, you know, I just give them my home address. I do a quick Google to make sure they're not like a known felon. <laughs> And then I give them my address. It's probably not the best system, but you know, so far nobody has stalked me. Um, and, but my sisters have always been like, get a PO box. And so I finally did. <laughs> so um, I will always just list my PO box now down in the description box of my video. So if you ever want to send me a card or a product or I don't know anything because people reach out to me a lot about hey can I send you this or that and I don't always have time to respond to everybody or I get back to people way late and I just decided I'm just gonna put a PO box in the description box and anybody who wants it can use it it's there so help me test out my PO box <laughs> if you have anything you need to send me it's in the description box below um happy mail so um well, let me remember Wanda. Wanda sent me an amazing project bag. And actually, uh, what did I do with her little business card? I believe she sells project bags. Oh no. What did I, did I lose it? Um, yes. Cross stitch project bags, floss rings, scissor fobs, quilts, wool applique, holiday home decor. It looks like she does it all. So I'm going to put her, um, she has an Instagram and an Etsy. So I'm going to show you that right there and I will link her down in the description box. Um, Wanda came to the meetup at the attic and then she emailed and asked if she could send me a little something and um, she sent me an amazing Halloween project bag. I am so excited about this. Okay, so here's the bag. Look at how cute it is with the black cats. You guys know I love black cats. And then the backing is spider webs. Um, it's really nice. It feels like it's made with soft and stable, which is like my favorite way now to make project bags. Um, also, nobody ever sends me project bags, which is totally fine. Nobody ever needs to send me anything, but nobody sends me project bags because I make all my own project bags. And um, I was super, super excited <laughs> to receive a project bag in the mail. I was like, oh my gosh, it's beautiful. And I have so many Halloween projects I want to start. And I think I only have like, I've only made myself one or two Halloween project bags. So yeah, this is, I, I think the Mill Hill project is going to get started first. So I have a feeling I'm going to just kit this up in um, my new Halloween project bag. So I just want to say thank you so much, Wanda. It's a beautiful bag. Love it. Okay. And then my last bit of happy mail is from the Fat Quarter Shop who very kindly gifted me all of their new releases. And there is some good stuff in here, um, including, I'm going to start with the biggest and the baddest. I have been admiring this on social media and I didn't think they were going to send it to me. And oh my God, it's so cool. I wish I used needle minders. <laughs> it's the Quilted Witch Needle Minder. It is like probably a full pound in weight. It is so big. It has two gigantic magnets on it. Um, the detail is amazing. This is like the most epic needle minder that exists. <laughs> 
I'm so excited. Thank you, Fat Corner Shop. Oh my gosh. Um, so they sent me the big epic quilted witch needle minder. And then to go along with it, they sent me the quilted witch cross stitch pattern, which how cute is this? They have a stitch along going on right now for this, I think for Stitchtober. Oh my gosh, it's so cool. It's all DMC. Um, I really like and appreciate how they tell you how many skeins of DMC you need. If you're stitching it with two strands, like as called for, I would probably do one strand, so I probably wouldn't need multiples, but I really appreciate when they include that kind of information on charts. So Quilted Witch has a cross stitch design. And then of course it has a quilt pattern because it's Lori Holt and she loves to turn her quilts into cross stitch and vice versa. Um, I really kind of want to make this. Of course I can't do it this year, but maybe next year, <laughs> like a delayed quilted witch um, quilt along maybe. It does look super complicated. Um, I mean, I shouldn't say complicated. It's just a lot of pieces. It all looks like pretty easy piecing, to be honest. Like there's just stars, squares, flying geese. Like, honestly, this is probably pretty easy piecing, but it's just big and lots and lots and lots of pieces. Um, I think that they did have kits for this. I might look and see if those are still available. Maybe I could just kit it up and then maybe next year. I don't know. Um, but yes, the Quilted Witch has a quilty pattern. I love it. Um, they have a new uh, Bee in My Bonnet by Lori Holt, Enamel Needle Minder, and this one is a little blue dragonfly. Looks like this. So cute. And then um, a little floss ring called Candy Star. Oh, Candy Star Thread Bling. So a little like if you like your floss on floss drops, a little floss ring. And then we have a new chicken club, which is number nine of 12 from Lori Holt. And this one is Percy and he is adorable. There's Percy. Um, let's see, they have a couple other new uh, cross stitch patterns. This one is from the Simply Signs series, and I love this one. This one's called Spooky. Um, I think it's so cool. I think I would actually probably do it in like darker colors, like black and gray, but um, it's super cute and orange too. But yeah, the Spooky sign. And then they have a new Stackables for September, and it is Sunflower September themed. So cute. Uh, and then a couple of new quilt patterns. This one is Castle Courtyard for It's So Emma. And then this one I um, I really wanna do with a Fat Quarter bundle. It's a Fat Quarter friendly with four size options. And so I need to kit this up with some of my Fat Quarters that I have all over this house. This one is called Tail Feathers Quilt Pattern. I think it's super cool. So. Yeah, thank you so much to the Fat Quarter Shop for sending me all of your new goodies. If you're interested in any of that, I will have it all linked down below in the description box. Um, I always have it listed in my description box, but I don't know if I ever talk about it here. I um, have an affiliate link with Fat Quarter Shop or I'm part of their affiliate program, which just means that like when I link to things from them, they know that it's me sending you. And so then I earn like a very small commission if anybody ever makes purchases, um, if they've clicked through from my links. It doesn't change the price of anything for you. It's just like Fat Quarter Shop thanking me for sending people their way. Um, so anyways, I always have that like noted down in my description box. But if you're ever wondering why some of the links maybe look weird, it's just because it's an affiliate link, meaning they'll know that I sent you to their website. So thought I'd mention that. Um, I think that's everything. <laughs> Did we reach the end? We might have reached the end. Uh, there's probably things I've left out. I probably have more to say. I don't know. I'm looking at this table and it's a hot mess and there's probably stuff I've forgotten. I hope not. But I can see on my camera that I've been filming for an hour and 16 minutes. And I know I'm going to edit it. Hopefully I can get it under an hour. I don't know. But I feel like this is a very long one. Um, oh, wait, I forgot one of the cutest things. Sorry. <laughs> I thought we were done. <laughs> Let me just show you these. They have these new pumpkin floss drops at Fat Quarter Shop that are so cute. I had set them aside because I'm like for sure about to use these to kit up a project. Um, Look how cute those are. They're little pumpkins. Floss drops. Okay, anyways, these will also be linked down below. I want more of them. Uh, 
Okay. Sorry, this is a very silly ending to the video. Uh, thank you guys all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed seeing what I've been up to for the past two weeks, um, even though it was a little bit delayed, but that just means that I'll be back with you in less than two weeks, probably. I'll have to do the math on what weekend that is, and hopefully I'm in town that weekend. Um, <laughs> but yeah, thank you guys all so much for watching, and um, I'll see you for that quilt tutorial, hopefully next week. All right, bye.